Hello ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching my video tonight. This is out of the norm for what you see from me. I um, am posting this with a blog, written blog, about a little one who passed away. Why? Because the plight of children that pass away in the U.S. need to be brought to your attention. These are children that have died from medical disorders um, that are beyond their control, they're genetic. And of course any child that passes away it's difficult to deal with. I deal with it every day from 1993 until September of, 19, four, of 2014. Sorry, this is difficult. In 2000, actually in October the 1st of 1999, I was given the charge of a little one that was three months old. His life was expectancy was one year. He was a tough little fighter and he lived to be five years, two months. And during that time, we almost lost him six times. He spent numerous times in the hospital. I won't share his name with you, um, but I will share his picture. It is in this within this blog. I have accepted the parents' decision that names not be used, and you should respect that too. When I went in search of respite care for the parents, we were already doing a nursing uh, agency, which I came from, for, to help them. And unfortunately, parents at Teal that have children that are critically ill like this, the resources are not enough. They are allowed so much nursing hours a day, and most of the time those hours can't be fulfilled. So when they get critically ill and the parents decide to let them go, there's no hospice, not a facility where you can take them like you can if an adult gets ill. Um, we have those here in the U.S. In New Zealand, they're commonplace. A third world country in which the government pays for the children's hospice. They pay for the staffing. They pay for the vehicles and the transportation needed for those children and families. Now, when a child becomes ill, it's not just a child. It's the parents. It's the siblings. It's the grandparents. It's all the extended family that hurt. And they want to be around that child if they get the opportunity. And it doesn't happen. If you were to go into a hospital and a child was at the end stage, you would go into a little bitty cubicle that is about 10 by 15, if that, and you would be allowed one or two people in at a time, not the whole family. In a children's hospice, you would be able to bring the family and have them all around, the little ones. In 2000 and. 13, I met a family whose child had passed away at the age of 17. Um, it was a difficult transition. Um, she had had cancer since she was three years old. The staffing at the hospital were great. They knew the child since she was three. But it was the parents that were hurting and the child herself. And the mother told me, when asked, you know that you can't change the diagnosis, but what would you have changed? And it was inevitably the answer that I've always gotten from parents the last few days. We would have liked to have been in some kind of controlled environment where there was nursing staff that the entire extended family could come. And all that our daughter wanted was for mom and dad to lay down next to her and comfort her. You can't do that at a hospital in a hospital bed. They're too narrow. 
Why am I blogging about this? Because I need you to understand the reality. And the reality is children die. Plain and simple. You can't get around it. You never will. So if we can't get around it, why isn't there facilities? In the U.S., there's one in California, San Leandro, California. There is one in Arizona, and there was one in New York. And in 2013, that an attempt was made. Not, I don't know how it's successful for Minnesota. The problem is, it's only three beds each. Um, not enough. Not near enough. We build convalescent hospitals for the senior care. If a child is injured and needs rehab facilities, they will go to a senior care facility where the next mean age and their closest to them is probably 65, maybe older. How would you like to spend that time there? I can guarantee you the children don't. I'm not even at 60 yet, and I don't. I can guarantee you that. So think about it. Um, the one in San Leandro, California is called the George Mark. I hope that I can reach out to you all to touch your hearts and understand what is needed. I am hoping to open a children's hospice. Right now I am listed under the Better Business Bureau as Brenda, I'm sorry, as Seminoff Home Pediatric Care. I have a bank account and hoping to set that up so that it will grow and possibly a GoFundMe. I don't know how to do it, but I will learn, believe me. The, the need is great. It's between five million and ten million to set something like this up. And I'm hoping to be umbrellaed maybe in the next few weeks. I have a business plan already in place. I need the property and I need, I have the nursing staff. Isn't that funny? I, I have a an entire nursing staff. I have an entire organization that is willing to work for me, and we have no facility. And uh, where I live in Sonoma County, it's one of the it is the most beautiful wine country ever. But the property values are skyrocketing every day, and it is very expensive. And I need backers. I'm willing to come to all of you and say, please send this blog out to your friends and contact me. You can contact me through the Empower Network system that I work for. Leave a message at the bottom of the page. You can get a hold of me at Nurse Brenda Seminoff 93 on Facebook. Um, I'm here. The children aren't going away unless they die. And wouldn't you want to die somewhere comfortable? My goal is to build a home that is designed by children, not by adults. I want the children to set up their own areas. Oh, I have general ideas. Uh, a tree house that can be accessible by wheelchair. A swimming pool that the actual floor of the pool rises to be completely flat so that the children can be lowered into the pool. And yes, even terminal and pediatric children enjoy the swimming pools. It actually prolongs their life. I want to have stables so that I can have pets so that the children can see them. I want to have kennels so that we can have therapy dogs. I want to have a large garage that has service bays so that mechanic friends can come in and maintain the cars of the nurses that work for us. Those are things I want. Um, the staff has to be top quality. It, it can't be just anybody. Believe me, I know what it takes to be a nurse for these children. I did it for a long time. And if you're a burnt out nurse, you can't do this job because it's more stressful. So I, I would like you to pass this video along. Don't sit back and ignore it. The children are dying every day. Nothing we do is going to stop it. 
So please consider it. Thank you and have a great day.